close your eyes and watch your breath. As the breath comes in, try to stay with the breath. If the mind wanders off, just bring it right back. And you have to do the bringing back. Nobody else can do this for you. This is one of the basic principles of training the mind. We suffer because we lack skill. And even though the Buddha can tell us about what the skills are that can put an end to suffering, we are the ones who have to master the skills ourselves. No one else can master them for us. So you have to take responsibility. Whatever your mind is going to do, you're going to try to do it well. And if it, your mind falls away from your original intention, well, you bring it back. You're not going to wait for some outside help to come in. And the best outside help you can get is advice on how to do this. But you have to learn how to figure out which advice is the best advice to follow. And then you have to do it yourself. This means you'll have to learn how to motivate yourself as well so that you want to do it. If we just simply do the practice because we feel we have to, but there's no desire in it, it gets dry really fast. So think about all the good things that come when the mind is trained. And all the dangers that you can avoid when the mind is trained. You see all the things that people do out there in the world, and you say, at least I don't do that. I'm not, don't harm other beings. When you can think about that, that gives you a sense of self-esteem. Okay, you've been able to do the practice so far, where you can do the next step and then the next. Because as we've followed the practice, we become new people from the practice. Some people say, I can't imagine myself gaining awakening. Well, the self you have right now is going to be different from the self that comes when the practice is followed, when you follow the path. There will be a new you that can actually gain awakening as a result of following the path. So the effort you put in is not wasted. Always remind yourself of that. And you have this opportunity. It's a very rare opportunity that we have here. The Dharma is being taught. We're still capable of following it. So take advantage of the opportunity while you have it. We live in this world, we depend on two kinds of strength, strength of body and strength of mind. But as you find as life goes on, the strength of body begins to fall away, and you have to rely more and more and more on strength of mind. Especially as you get old, as you get sick, and particularly when you die, that's when strength of body is no use at all. You have to depend totally on your own strength of mind. So strengthen your mind. Make sure that the good qualities in there are in charge. The bad qualities get pushed out outside the wall. You don't need them. You may have used them in the past, but now you begin to realize they're not really your friends. They're the kind of friends that get you to break the law, and then when the police come, they go running away, leaving you to be punished. So remember, your good qualities are your, are, are your good friends. And you can strengthen them, and you strengthen them, and they'll strengthen you. So try to motivate yourself in a way that you feel that you want to do the practice. Not simply that you have to, but you want to do the practice because it's a good thing to do. You find happiness in seeing that your defilements fall away. You find happiness in finding there are times when the mind could have wandered astray, but it doesn't. It stays right here. There's a sense of deep well-being that comes from learning how to be skillful. So try to find that well-being and the potential for that well-being inside you and develop it as much as you can. <laughs>